Hey, welcome back. The last video that I posted a day or two ago, I did a review on the Uniflame uh, large cook set. So today we're going to use the fry pan. So, you've seen this before, but here it is again. My new, little new cook set that doesn't take up too much room at all which is one of my favourite part about this is how compact it is and how everything packs away so today we're only going to use the fry pan so what are we going to cook today? I'm going to do an egg omelette okay so these are the ingredients we're going to use so I've got three eggs zucchini some mushrooms, I've got some parmigiana cheese, it's already grated, and salt. So I've got my ultra sharp zebra stainless steel knife. So we'll just cut up some uh, of these nice, fairly fresh mushrooms. It's been a, a week since I, I've done the Grocery shopping and these mushrooms are purchased a week ago. One more ingredient I failed to mention and that's what you can see I'm cutting up now, some onions. Not my favourite job, cutting onions. Now if you want you can also add some uh, garlic to this. So that's most of the preparation that's done. So we're going to cook this using my Origo 3000 double burner stove over there. So what we'll do now is we'll just open the burner, turn the burner on and we'll light that up. Now these Origo stoves, they, they, they burn quite hot, particularly with this fuel that I've used. If you watch a, a video that I'll link to at the end of this video, uh, you'll see that I don't use the normal type of metho uh, fuel that's commonly available for these. I use a fire, like a, bio, a bioethanol fuel. I almost forgot what it was called then. <laughs> So I like to turn it down to about two on the dial. So these have got a dial for range from zero to four. So I turn it down to about two and that's about half power. I find that's pretty plenty warm enough. So we'll put a bit of olive oil in there now. So we'll just let that heat up. So th this is basically uh, what I'll take with me most times when I go camping, particularly if I've got the room in the vehicle, because as you can see, the Origo 3000 stoves are fairly large but in comparison to some cookers that I've seen they're not too bad it's probably about average that should be warm enough now at least to put the onions in I went a bit overboard with the onions here I've got quite a lot so as you can see it doesn't take too long to heat up I love cooking on the fire you might have noticed on a few of my videos that I've posted, particularly the cooking videos that I've posted in my kitchen here, that this Origo stove always sits over there. It's because I use this at home as well. Because um, I don't like cooking. We've got an electric stovetop, and I don't look like cooking on an electric stovetop. 
I find I can't control the temperature uh, good enough for my liking. So this, particularly this one here, the, the temperature control on this is so easy and it's, oh, it's, it's amazing. You can have the smallest of flame on this. So let's add these zucchinis in now. Now what I like to use in my non-stick pans, particularly this Uniflame cook set, well any non-stick, I like to use these, if you see that, there's no way you're going to damage the non-stick coating with these. So I like to use these. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break these three eggs inside the bowl. Hopefully you'll be able to see me here. You should be able to see me. I've got a wider angle lens for my camera. So you can hear how that's sizzling away there. And that's only turned up about halfway. So this fuel that I'm using, this bioethanol, it, it burns hotter than your metho does. I like to add the parmigiana cheese into the eggs. And then we'll add a dash of salt in here. And we're going to whisk this up a bit. So you can see that. So what I'll do with this, after this is mostly cooked, I will then mix the eggs, the eggs mixture inside here. So let's just give this a mix. Now because the mushrooms don't take as long to cook, I will add them in after I've cooked the zucchini at least halfway. I don't tend to add the salt in here, particularly with the mushrooms, until it's almost uh, cooked. Another tip to do is to also turn, you want to turn the heat right down low and that's why I love using this. I can't control the temperature on this well enough on my electric stove top. Otherwise it's so easy to burn the eggs before, uh, before it's cooked through on the inside. So I might add the mushrooms now. I think I've gone overboard with the mushrooms. I might just put half that amount in. So you notice thus far I haven't put any salt in here yet. Like I mentioned, I'll put that in towards the end. And anyway, I've got some salt in with the eggs. I don't think there's enough there. I'll put a little bit more. Uh, if you want, you can put a crack of uh, pepper in there as well. After we pour the eggs in here, I'm going to turn the temperature right down. So we'll cook it on a low heat. And then what they'll do is that'll cook one side. And then we've got to grab them after that side is cooked. We'll then grab a plate and we'll flip it over onto the plate and then we'll just push it to slide back in and cook the other side. And hopefully it'll all come out in one piece. Hopefully you can see that. So this goes really nice with some Italian bread. I've got some Italian bread here. I'll just grab it. Now I bought this Italian bread from a bakery, Italian bakery down the Gold Coast near Narang, the suburb of Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia, for those that don't live in Australia. So it's frozen because I can't buy this, because I can't buy this bread locally. I, uh, when I'm down at the Gold Coast or if my sister's coming up, I get her to buy a few loaves for me and I'll put them in the freezer. So there it is there, it's really nice this bread. I'm going to pop that in my toaster shortly, but I'll just leave it over here just off the side to thaw out a bit. It'll be a good time to give this a bit of a mix again. Now let's just get all this down off the side because I think this is almost ready. So I think we might add some salt in here now. I like to use this salt that you get at the Coles or Woolies from a company called Saxa and it's a natural sea salt. It comes with the grinder. I tend to get this when I'm using the camping because as you can see it doesn't take up a lot of room. 
So now we want to turn this heat right down. Alright, so that's on two. If I turn it up to four maximum, you can see the flame there. I don't know if that's showing up. So we're going to turn this right down. So I cook this low and slow. So I'm just putting it off the side here and there's a reason I'm doing that because I just want a bit of that, that heat to get out of the pan. So now we'll give this another mix and we'll pour all this in here. So remember you've got your Parmesan cheese in here as well that's mixed in with the, the eggs. Now the trick I find here is to not leave it alone you want to just slowly stir it as it's cooking. So you'll see as the base is cooking there, so we'll just stir it like so, so all the uncooked eggs can mix in on the base as well. So that, that tends to, I find what that does is it tends to help keep the omelette together for when I go to turn and most of the time I manage to get it turn around in one piece. It all depends on the pans that you used. Uh, the other day I attempted to do this on one of my better non-stick pans that I've got in the house here and it wasn't as good as this pan. Because this works quite well on this because of the non-stick coating on these particular uniflame uh, pans. I'm not, I'm not too sure what their trick is, how they do it, but it's definitely the best non-stick coating of any pans that I own. Now I'm sure there's probably our pans out there that uh, do have as good, if not maybe even better non-stick coatings. Uh, they tend to cost quite a fair bit of money, so I don't spend too much money on the pans. I usually pick them up when they're on so it is a bit of a slow process. I do take me time. I could probably have the heat up a bit higher. You can see as it cooks on the base. So you can see it's starting to cook quite nicely on the base and now I'm just, what's cooked on the base, I'm just mixing it up so there's a bit of uncooked. And fingers crossed, particularly out <laughs> on camera, most of the time I nail it, but sometimes it might break in one or two pieces. It doesn't matter, you're still eating the same thing. We, we cook this probably, well I cook this probably about once a week, sometimes two times a week for lunch. So the trick is to make sure you've got a cooker that's got really low height, you can really adjust the heat precisely. It's not so runny as it was before, but I'm just taking extra precautions here. Just want to try to do my best and make sure this works out for you guys. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do now, is just, we're just going to flatten this out now and let that cook. Now you just leave it. Now it's a good time if you want to add a little bit more salt. I think that's going to be enough salt. I also like to just move the pan around a little bit for those who's got these stoves. It's a good idea just to move it around a bit so otherwise what happens is it directs more of the heat right in the middle and you'll get like really brown on the middle. So I like to get the omelette nice and brown coating all the way around. So you can see the temperature, the um, heat I've got set up. So on the dial here, we're probably just a tad under one and a half. It was on one, I just turned it up to one and a half just before. So we'll grab, grab a plate, because that's almost ready to turn. So of course when you're camping, there's no big rush. I mean, you could do this a lot quicker. I mean, I could probably have done this half the time if I wanted to. But I just find if you take your time, it turns out a lot better. So hopefully we'll time the turning over to, to me liking. So I don't know if you can see that. I can actually grab that and turn it, turn it around. So we'll just go a little bit more. I think that's cooked enough on that side. And once you turn it around, because it's mostly cooked all the way through, it doesn't take as long to cook. 
Okay, let's turn this around now. There it is. Oh, that's warm. So there you go. Now that won't take long to cook on that side, if you can see that. I'm quite happy how that is. It's just perfect. Could have gone a little bit more on this side here, but it's not easy because you can't, you can't see, but you, normally you can tell by just flicking this around. And, and after you cook a number of these, you get a good, pretty good idea when it's time to turn around. It's just a bit of trial and error. So this Uniflame fry pan is the trick guys. It makes it so much easier with this Uniflame fry pan because you can see, you know, I mean you've probably seen a few of the videos that I've done raving on how great these pots are with the non-stick coating. I mean look at that. You know, I've cooked steak in here and just virtually just wiped it with the rag and it came up clean. <laughs> So you do got to look after it, so I don't overheat, I don't use too high a heat. Uh, you can see the utensils that I tend to use, they're quite soft. So we might turn that down, I've got that turned up to almost 2 just to speed it up a bit. But I can hear that sizzling away too much. We'll turn it right down low. And we'll check this. Just excuse me, I'm just checking the bread. So this is almost ready. We'll turn the heat down a lot lower. Now I don't know if you can see that, it's virtually it's just the smallest of flame right there. Now sure, if you're camping, you'll probably think, wouldn't the wind blow it away? I mean, there's a um, drifter makes this uh, windshield. It's quite big, that goes up about so high. And I've used this, because uh, I've owned this Origo stove for a long time. For those that don't know, uh, these Origo stoves, you can't buy them anymore. They're, which is a shame. Uh, I think the company, for some reason or another, decided not to make them anymore. Uh, they're very popular for yachties. So they're built for the yachting industry. So it's all stainless steel. So all this, this is everything on this is virtually all stainless steel. It's just built to last. Got two big burners, so each burner will hold about a, a litre of, of the fuel. So it's been a long time since I've, I've filled this up. So when I put that off the side, and I'll turn this off, so that is ready. Perfect. So I'll just grab, see if I can get the other one, the other one's got stuff. Look at that. <laughs> I nailed that. <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay guys, I've done a bit of a oops moment. I was cutting up, preparing this, showing how great the non-stick coating is. And I just went around to check and I didn't hit the record button. <laughs> so we missed probably about the last five minutes of the footage. But basically, I've just shown how I just tipped the food in there and they can see the non-stick coating. Now I didn't clean that, that's just come out straight out the pot like that. So that's very easy to clean. So virtually you could just get a wet, wet rag or something, just wipe that. And that's the beauty with these pots too, it actually helps save water. So if you're somewhere remote, you won't need to use so much water to cook. So I showed that I like using, I'll grab the butter. I like using this uh, Mainland Butter Soft, 100% pure butter. Okay, you can buy it at any of the local, uh, local grocery stores here in Australia, like Woolworths, Coles, Aldi, any of those places. Actually, I'm not sure about Aldi. They may not have that. There we go. And if you see that, look at that. Just nicely cooked right through. So guys, it's worth a try. These are really, really yummy. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, put a like and please subscribe.
so you don't miss out on any other future videos.